In part two of our Darren Sutherland 10 year anniversary special, we're privileged to be joined by his father, Tony Sutherland, best friend, David Murphy, and boxers, Luke Keeler and Tommy McCarthy, to discuss the great man's legacy. It's up to 10 years since your son's passed, he's left a big legacy. People still talk about him. Bush Tones, revered him, still love him, still talk about him, still remember him to this day. Must mean a lot uh, to you. And myself and the family, we so appreciate that because people come and go in your life and you get washed away with different events. Everybody's like a seven day news, but somehow 10 years on, it's nice to know people still remember Darren, still want to talk about him. And David will tell you that's one of his best friends from school, you know, yeah. to then <coughs> took this lad and Darren down to St. Bridges. <laughs> St. Bridges start, to start. Boxing Academy, started yeah. off together. It didn't uh, last too long myself. Right. Okay, um, <coughs> can, can it? No, what else is there? Uh, Bernard something. There was Bernard and there was another guy there. He actually went into the high performance team. And it was nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, yeah, I remember when they went in there, he was saying, oh, he says, a bit old. I said, I just, yeah. just want him off the street. Yeah. You know? You're David. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. He's, He's a lot older. older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's only a month in between. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's the 18th of April on the 14th of March. There's only a month yeah. between us. Well, Darren was um, beginning to get into the, um, the wrong crowd right. from the, yeah. the estate across in it. It's where, it's all, where, we, where they were living at the time. Yeah. Man, it was a bit of a rough area for, for kids who was growing up, especially the coloured kid as well. You know? yeah. Remember <laughs> once the police actually brought him home? <laughs> and that was it. it was, they was hanging around the wall. They weren't doing nothing. And the other kids, when they saw the police throwing them, they all ran off. Darren sit there and he says, I'm doing nothing. So they brought him home and he said, Mr. Sutherland, I know you and I know this is your son. She brought him home, but the crowd he's hanging around it. He says, it's not good for him. That's what. Keegan. You know Keegan? Gary Keegan. Gary, Gary Keegan. Keegan. He's coaching the club at the time. That's right, Gary Keegan. Play performance, yeah. Right? Well, he, he, no, well, he, he, that's who he started off with. That's who he started off with. A little bit boxing gym yeah. down at um, Village. I dropped him down there. There's a line from Keegan here, he says uh, he was running the club, anyone who met Darren Sutherland will never forget their first meeting. Mm -hmm. When he walked through the club at St. Walked through the door at St. Bridges, the first comedy he made was that he was going to be the first Irish Black World Champion in professional boxing. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 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 Sean McGoldrick's book about Irish boxing. At 14, yeah. But yeah. yeah. well, is he is, is yeah. watching the TV at that, night after night? So two, three o'clock in the morning, we get up and watch a boxing, you know, and sit down there. He said, ah, one of these days, one of these days, one of these days. He says, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 But to see him started off at 14, too young to start, too old to start it off, yeah. and got to where he got to the Olympics. Yeah. You know, you look back and say, wow, you know, yeah, yeah. take dedication, take stamina to keep up with it. It must have been a wrench for you though after he, he left Ireland to go to Sheffield to join Brendan Ingold's gym when he was still only was 15, 16, 15, 15, 15 and a half, 16. Yeah, dreams yeah. To there was terms and conditions applied to that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Finished school. No, he didn't finish school. Left school. Left yeah, school. He got lessons over here. Yeah, but the, the terms and conditions, so his, his mother and I say, look, because uh, you man. Brendan, Brendan he wanted him yeah. to come over and he says, look, if you're going to take him over there, he has to go back to school over there. We'll pay for it, you're going to you go back to school over there. And that was the terms and condition. And when he goes to Sheffield at that young age, he's going to continue schooling and do the boxing at the same time. And he went and got his little part-time job yeah. and does it. And he used to call him Iron Man Darren because he had to, some guys took some pictures of him with him in his shirt, looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember that. There was a video that I had seen. It's on YouTube, but he's like 16. He yeah. I'm not going to take care of myself. And he's he's doing it. I've been calling my man Darren. Um, he, he made such an impression on those guys over there. But what made Darren came back to. That was an amazing gym with Prince Nassim over there and a lot of big names as well. Oh, Winkelbank. Yeah, he loved the Prince of Asim used to drop him to school in his yeah. Ferrari. <laughs> really? You know what I mean? So, like. That made Darren more ambitious to get to the height, to, have to that height. 
Because of mine, yeah. Willie Valentine was in, in the house at, at that time. He yeah. was pro. Yeah, Willie Valentine, but he was, he taught me a couple of stories as well. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. They're all in, in one dig, weren't they? Yeah, it's all in the little house together. He was a pro boxing chef. Yeah, yeah. Time. Okay. It was his short time there. Yeah. yeah. Like when Darren came home, did he, he joined St. Saviour's gym. Luke used to spend time over there uh, doing a bit of boxing you were in St. Matthew's, but he used to kind of hang around the scene. What was, what was the impression you, you got of Darren? He was a couple of years older than you, but... Yeah, he, used to, he was the man, wasn't he? Like he was the one, one like he, he was a middleweight, he was a well, well the way he'd done a bit of sparring with him uh, near at the end, when we four se- seniors, and uh, he, he took her easy on me, you know? He wasn't, he wasn't a bully around, you know? But, uh, we had a couple of rounds together. Good. Yeah, a few trips as well away. Yeah, I went to London a couple of times to save. I think you were in London in Sheffield. Yeah, in Sheffield. Yeah. When you followed that, 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 that guy in here, yeah, this big, massive black guy, uh, he looks bigger than there. Yeah. And he, he walked out there with this big grin on his face, like, and he was the man. Yeah. Because all the Saviors fighters went up and they were all losing, back to back losing. And Darren turned the table on them. This was a club fight. Yeah. 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 This guy and I went, oh my God, look at the size of him. And I was shit to myself a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but the way he handled him. Yeah. And at one stage of the fight, you know, it's like the second round. And when Darren was walking back to the ring, Darren looked back at him and he gave that sinister smile at him and thought, yeah, you bastard. <laughs> and then they stopped the fight in the third round stopped because. Fight, yeah. Yeah, 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 he stopped he it. Up, but he yeah. had, he had, yeah, had, had it. Yeah. Did he have no injury at the time? He was no, no, back your injury now or? No, that is before the eye, that's the, the eye injury came yeah. after that. That was in the yeah. Russian, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. For that happened in the National stuff. Stadium, he was fighting the Russian. Russian. It was a friendly against the, the Russian. Finger in the eye. And the, 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 you know the gloves is stitched together. Yeah. It came apart, and the he tongue went through the eye. But we thought I was gonna okay. He's gonna hang up the gloves now, yeah. but he didn't. He was out for nearly a year after. Yeah. That was a big setback. And yeah. yeah. Like, so he, Darren, Darren went back to school, and eventually he got a spot as number one middleweight in Ireland after Andy Lee goes to the Olympics, and he beats Darren on the to get that number one spot. So he, he's number one guy in the high performance. Luke, you're coming along behind that middleweight, and Tommy, you're just a young kid coming down at that yeah. stage, starting to. Get into the scene. How did you? How did you encounter Darren Sutherland? Or how did he encounter you well, first joined? The I'd say, like most people in the country, heard about Darren before they had seen him. So when the, the first underage table performance started, um, somebody in my club, Nicky Catsy, was on that the underage squad. So they were going down to Dublin every Saturday and they'd come up and. He says, some black guy from America in Dublin, tossing the head of Andy Lee. Oh, I don't know who he is, some American, he, he's giving it to Andy Lee every week. So then I ended up getting on the team myself, went down and Darn came in and, and uh, I, can't, I think he might have been just wrapping up his size when we went in. But then I could hear him talk, everyone was going, look at him and all these big muscles, not yeah. only 14. And um, all the all the senior champions were like superstars just because they're on the posters and they're up there and uh, darn this this American. So I, I was listening. I could hear him talking. And I, I think he's from the Caribbean. I could hear all the the twang. So he come over and he said, hey man, and started talking to him. So me, both of us just just started talking. It turned out we had like similar backgrounds. Like he was mixed the. Um, Sim Vincent, you know, my family is Jamaican, but both West Indian backgrounds and spent time in London and this and all. So we had a lot of a lot in common. So then we just every week I was down, he used to just talk to me and give me advice and training tips and just 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 took me under under his wing. And then as, as people were like coming around, says people used to think then. That I was his wee brother. Right. <laughs> Billy Wilds used to go, there's the brothers, the brothers. <laughs> so just from from was about 14, 15, up until he, he turned pro. Well, up, up until his, his death, he always stayed in contact with me and just giving me advice and just almost like a big brother role came. Yeah. That one has a big brother role to, to everyone, everyone, isn't he? Yeah. yeah no, his sisters especially. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> I, I, I took on that role. <laughs> when you and you the, moved to a different country. <laughs> when, when you moved to England, David took over the Big Brother role. Yeah. yeah, they look up to him very, you know, but they always looked up to him. He, he makes you look up to him though. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of thing. I'll give you one little story with Darren, right? He won the seniors and he went on his binge <laughs> and he ate too much. But part of the agreement with Belly Wash and the, the uh, senior team was who wins the seniors has to take part in the Four Nations. Right. But Darren forgot all about that. And he went to the bench. <laughs> and he called me one day out of blue and he says, Da, I says what? He says, Billy Wash called me and he says, uh, the seniors start in like seven days' time. I says, yeah. He said, that I'm a stone and a half overweight. We fight. <laughs> I said, well, you better get. He said, that would you not phone him? I said, me, phone him. <laughs> no, you the one that's got to play. He said, ah, that would you phone him? I said, all right, so I phoned Billy. And I said, Billy, Darren is like, he said, no, Tony, he knows what he was supposed to do. <laughs> he got himself there. When I phoned Darren back, voicemail, voicemail, voicemail. I keep kidding. calling it all. Like, he was out running, right? Yeah. He got that weight down. And he was like three ounces under his fight weight in less than seven days. That's a stone and a half. Now that's dedication. Yeah. Yeah. I see you as dedication. Sure. But I was dropping him down. I picked him up. I picked him up on um, the university. He was going DCU. DCU. Yeah. yeah. I picked him up at DCU in the morning. But he's weighing. And he's going in. And he's got his big jacket on. He's got a hoodie over his head. He got the temperature in the car. Sky high. <laughs> I am sweating. Mm. And I'm going, Dan, he says, no, Dan, just leave it. And you don't say anything to him because when he's been starving to make weight, oh, yeah. oh, oh everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stay away from him. Like, I, I had to suck it up, got him to the station, he stripped down, stand on the scale. The man says, yeah, you made the weight, you're three, two or three um, ounces or something under the weight. I said, God help them in that ring. <laughs> and that's where he knocked out yeah, the, sky the Scottish there, guy yeah. in the first round. You were there. Yeah. <laughs> was it in Dublin? No, it was, was in Dublin, yeah. It was the four nations. He won the gold. He won the gold. He won the gold. He won the gold. Yeah, that's right. It was on BBC. It yeah. was on BBC, yeah. But I remember it was um, Darren's Flashbox on Bebo, remember? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he had a knockout, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. Right. Oh, I remember seeing that, yeah. He was so. That's how he, that's how he, he beat uh, James Gill. <laughs> he beat the final, he, 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 no, he, he, he fought the, the Scottish guy in the final. But the fight before that was James. Because it was England, Scotland, Wales, yeah, and Ireland. Ireland. Yeah. Yeah, and he was representing that. So he beat the, the, all three of them. But the, the Scottish guy, the morning, and he's a oh, starving dad. I said, there's only one day left to go. And when he comes, he says, I will never do that again. I says, what? Well, he says, that much. <laughs> he says, that is hard work. Yeah. Never eat to that extent again. Yeah, he, he never did. He was ferociously dedicated. I think Kenny Egan has said he was the most dedicated fighter he's ever seen. A lot of people have said similar. But yeah. all that kind of culminates in qualifying for the Olympics in 2008. All that is a real game changer for yeah, Irish yeah. boxing, vindication for the high performance unit. Probably inspiration to kids like you, yeah, yeah, yeah. younger men come along like yourself, see what's possible. Do you remember how excited he was to qualify when he did out in Athens? Oh, I think Athens, yeah. yeah. But you know, the fight prior to that was the Europeans and to qualify, he fought James and James he gave James the, the, the object and we watched that fight over and over and over and over. Darren knocked him down in the second round. Yeah, Darren won that fight. Yes. But they give James quite a one point. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Really and I watched that fight so many times. And he was pissed off about it. But I says, look, you have another chance of getting there. But the Europeans is the hardest one out of all of yeah, the game to qualify. Yeah. The Europeans are the hardest schedule. And he got through it and he was satisfied with getting through it. But it happened in the Olympics. Now, I think Darren set his mind. I'm getting my foot on that stadium. I'm getting my foot on that stadium. What the hell? I'm, <laughs> I'm getting my foot on that podium. Yeah. But once I get my foot on that podium, that would set me up for the for the, 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 yeah. the prevail. 
I think he switched off a bit. Do you think he stopped at that? Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> yeah, that. I think he stopped. He stopped at that level. Yeah, his performance against Blanco, the Blanco, I think. Was second and on. Yeah. Yeah. We beat him in the World Championships and then he blows him away. Louis, Louis. Gold medal. Yeah. Gold medal. I so, thought so too. A lot of people said that and his yeah. attitude that he was needy, just happy to, to get the medal, was he? Because yeah. it was it, the two performances, I know it's hard to keep it going like every every day, but the performance against Blanco was like he would have beat anyone in the world. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Against the Gale was a wee bit below par. Well, the, the, even if the, the fight before Blanco, the, um, the, 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 the Turkish guy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he turned around, your man was stripping off the gloves before the bell. <laughs> he just wanted to get out of there because that was lashing the hell out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is. You know, he had that power, he had that strength, yeah. that inner strength that you say is low. If he sets his mind to do something. Yeah, because some of you saw yeah. that power being demonstrated back in Ireland when he was inspiring, like mm -hmm. you were telling a few stories before. But you know, the, um, the guy that yeah. I think, the, one of the best fights I've seen in the yeah, it, is, it was like a game against the Russian world champion. Remember when they went to the world championships in Chicago? Right. And, yeah. And I watched the, the um, that's when Blanco beat him first, and he yeah, beat yeah. The, the Gale as well at the same time. But we was what I, I was more focused on the, um, what's his name? Is it Matt Karabov? Yes, yeah, that's him. Andy Levy, the world title. Yeah, yeah. and I'm looking at him and I said, boy, that's going to be a force to be reckoned with. But then I went to a spare in, in session in, in, um, in Vladivostok or something like that. The last yeah, I dropped, yeah. <laughs> dropped him. And he dropped him. Yeah. He dropped his heel. Who else did he drop, did you say? <laughs> I was over, we did a multi nation for that year in, in, in the, and we were over in the stadium. But remember, he did great wars with Kenny Egan. Like, but as you've seen him drop oh, Kenny with a, with a body shot right to the body, yeah. You would have seen this part of the time. Yeah, well. because when we were on their A's training, they, I think they used to come and spar on a Saturday. Yeah, that's the day. Kenny, Darn, and Big Con Shane. And mm. he, was, he was dropping that room with bodies on the Yeah, the, the spars were, were like fights, it was all exciting because Val's on the top of the game with Kenny up here, darn up there. Yeah. It's brilliant. So like, after those Beijing Olympics, you know, Darren has an Olympic medal in his pocket. Obviously a great negotiating tool mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. pro contract, you, you'd probably love to have had him yourselves, no doubt. Yeah. But so what did you think of his potential as a pro when he, when he went after Because he looked like a ready-made professional, yeah. didn't he? What do you what did you think? I think it's fully still world champion. Yeah. He yeah. always wanted to be powerful. Yeah. yeah. His dream was to take off in the world, be a world champion. Yeah. That was his dream. He was destined to go that way. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's any deal. He, he wanted, wanted to, to bring to back back then to win the world title as a pro. Like if if he never became a world champion, it would have been an underachievement. Yeah. I think because everyone he was just from even before the Olympic time. I remember talking to him. He just go pro now. He says I'm caught up in the Olympic dream. Yeah. But after Eddie, it was all systems go. Once he went to the um, pro park to watch a rugby, he was invited there. Yeah. That's after he came back from the Olympics. And he came home the night, he says, I'm going to bring back a world title trip and I'm going to fall yeah. pro park. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. my That's my that role, yeah. that trajectory, it's not beyond the realm of possibility because people in this very weight class, Carl Froch and George Gross did Wembley. Yeah. yeah, same crowd. But I know there's a lot of things that yeah. need to go right and a lot of things that need but to go right. But he had the, the farm with his bottom and his debut, he yeah. headlined in his debut. He was DCU, yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 headlined, yeah. yeah. Was he started with six round or did he? Yeah. No, three round. Three round. But it was meant to be, it was scheduled for six. He stopped him on with body something. He went, the, 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 uh, all his pro fights he won within the rounds. Mm. With, 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 four and a half. Yeah. yeah, when even in the four round, he, he stopped your man in the third round. Yeah. You know? The flight that got hurt was a head, was mm. a head crash. And the cut, the cut wasn't healed properly. Yeah. It wasn't looked at. Yeah. And Darren had a special thing about promises to me. He was very uh, well. Don't make Darren a promise. Yeah. From a child. Growing up there. Darren, you come into the shop with us and I'm going to buy you a toy. Don't come home without that toy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? He'd, he'd be pissed off for the rest of the day. Like, he'd, you know, you don't do that. You don't do that to Darren. Darren Darren's the kind of person he was promised. Uh, it, 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 Stacey, since Stacey made 
the best thing, man. Um, what's her name's wife? Who is that one? Uh, Frank Malone's wife. Oh, uh, Tracy. Tracy. Yeah. She said the best thing. Darren was naive. Right? Yeah. And thinking that life was going to be so sweet. But then I come from the high performance team, where they were Getting well the looked after. Yeah, well, I remember the Billy the same thing as well, but because I was always wanted to go pro from every uh, kid too. And I'm all go with the Darn man. Billy says, well, look, Darn's over on his own. He, like, he wants to come back. Mm -hmm. I was talking to him, he wants to come back here. It's a completely different world because you are on your own in the world. Yeah. Yeah. He went from the whole performance spin, looked after yeah. every which way to being a professional. Before to, 2009, uh, Worlds in Milan. The team went off turn, came in and gave a talk to them and said, Yeah, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. Treasure yeah. what you have. You've yeah. got the free physio, you've got the nutritionist, yeah. you've got everything, the masseurs and all that. And all that disappeared. I have to pay for all that. And then yeah. they went to the World Championships and it was only when they came home, I think the day they arrived home, they found out about what happened there. And you have been an Olympic medalist, they're expecting to get the best. Yeah. 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 It didn't happen. Mm. That's, the pro that's, that's the thing with the pro game. That's the way she was talking about. Was not even thinking from the high performance they could continue or even get better. Yeah. But if I took a nose dive, yeah. you know, and that'd be more I It's one thing the high performance then to what he did. Yeah, like, so you would have taken up the same message that Darren would have maybe hinted at don't turn pro. That was your yes. thing for yeah. what you told Katie, don't turn don't pro. Don't talk pro. Don't get Katie to turn pro, don't do it. And that would have been your advice to boxers for you. Yeah, yeah, but, it, it, yeah but the thing is, it's the pro game, you know. It's, it's a doggy dog world. Darren was supposed to go on that Sunday weekend, was supposed to go to his cousins at the barbecue, and he was told, you come into dinner with us. Luke. Luke and that one. Yeah. He was supposed to go with them that weekend. And he said, no, but I want to do it. He said, no. He was told, you're going to Portugal for training. He says, I've been here, Dad, and I've been here day in and day out. They're not training me in the gym. Now they want me to go out to Portugal to train because one of the head boxers was had a big fight coming up. And they were taking me. They no, well, it, I don't know if he was, just, if he was in the same, whether it was going to be a spy card or not. But he was going to go to Portugal with this guy. Yeah, a camp. A camp in Portugal to train. And he couldn't see the logic of it. He says, what's the point? He said, I can train here. Why am I going to Portugal? He says, because I'm going to end up paying second fiddle to this person. Yeah. And Daniel will do second fiddle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't his own. Okay, so then don't do second fiddle. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, he is He's going to be. He's going to be from day one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Am I going to be the main event? Or I'm not going to be anything. His first fight, he was yeah. the main event. Well, who was the man yeah. there? James Booth, was it? Booth, yeah. And he yeah. really ended up being the last fight. He was yeah. the main event. James fought before him. But yeah. Or Jamie Bill, was it? Jason Bill, wasn't it? Jason Bill. 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 Jason so Darren Red, I'm gonna tell you something. Now I don't want you to it's it's upsetting. This is serious now. I don't want you to get too upset. I just go, I started panicking at me. What's he what is it? Just tell me he says now um awful news here. Darn Darn's dead. Uh, couldn't be, no way. He says oh, he, apparently he killed himself. I just couldn't believe it. I was in complete shock yeah. because he was dead. One of the most positive and full of life people and ambitious. So I was going, no way, but he must be mistaken. Have you told him? He says, no, trust me. So um, I still didn't kind of, I didn't really believe it because it just didn't seem, he didn't, and not, I don't know who would kill himself, but he didn't seem like the kind of person who. Yeah. So around Ross Hickey, because Ross Hickey was close with Darn as well. Ross, he says, oh no, before he even says anything, he says, oh no, Tom. And is it true? And he says, yeah, fuck sake. So I was in with me and him just reminiscing a wee bit about the darn and then 
it was a uh, look at the it's a star spread and then so yeah. it's just just unbelievable. I I'll never forget it. It was a Monday night. I got a phone call about quarter to seven from Nicola Shanique. I can't remember which one it was. I was in Dublin. I needed to come back from from work. The kids in the house. My kids were young at the time. Yeah. Two or three. Two or three. And um, Shanique, whoever it was, I, I was in my mum's and I, I walked out into the garden and started with Shanique, and she was hysterical. And she obviously told me then, and I just let this roar. And the whole family come out. <laughs> out to the garden and I'd say I was in Navin within the hour. Yeah. I was straight up to Tony where I could come up to the house. I was still in shock. I was just uncontrollably shook. Like I, I was just there was no calm me down or anything like that. Like I was I was, I was there but I caught the Tony's and that was it. We were planning. we were that was a Monday. We were in England by Wednesday. So we couldn't go over before then, we wanted to go over we straight. We wanted to go that night, we wanted to, yeah. to just didn't want to stay in his own. Well, it, don't, don't come over <laughs> just yet because things had been looked into and blah blah blah. So we had to yeah, we had to wait. It was the longest wait ever, yeah? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, today. Yeah. I'll never forget, are we? Yeah. I wrote a poem there as well. I wrote a poem nearly every year since he's been yeah. Sent to Walter Tony. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all in the little packs. <laughs> and a boxing team or a life team or uh, a bit of both, it's just everything, it's just all stuff that uh, we used to do and the stuff I wanted to say throughout the years. And just just memories basically of yeah. something I've always had every year of something to keep his memory alive and yeah. just things that would have happened throughout the years. Like so I've always had something there to Ten years on, what do you think Darren would be doing? Thirty seven would he be? Thirty seven, yeah, he's a he's a month younger than myself, so yeah. thirty seven still He'd be retired by now. Yeah, well retired. He had said to me before he went professional, he'd uh, we were down in DCU and any time we could I'd get out to DCU there'd be parties happening everywhere and me and Darren would be in the room I don't know, playing PlayStation or something, looking out the window and all the parties of all the college kids. Yeah. Me and Darren would be sitting there and do you go to these parties all? We're in the college, come on, let's do it. But he'd said to me one night, he said, look, I'm going to be big by the time I'm 30. We're going to be big. Me and you was going to, to Vegas for our 30th. Yeah. That's it. That was the plan. That was the plan. Obviously, that didn't happen, but he had plans. He always had stuff in his head, but it was, it was a different person than a lot of other people. Yeah. What do you think he'd be doing, Tony? Like, would he be... Darren into boxing training, would he be back I'd coaching the Irish lads or what do you think he would do? Yeah. 37 still young, isn't it? Like you yeah, still definitely. Training, you'd, 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 yeah, he would have been coaching. He would, yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't give up the boxing as a, he would have been given the boxing as a fighter. But he he would have had his world titles anyway. He, he wouldn't he would give up the gym. He wouldn't, you see, I remember when he, once he says to me, he says, see all these people going to work nine to five? See, I couldn't do that, that. Mm. He says, what do you mean? He says, no, I couldn't do that night to find business. He says, my gym is my office. Yeah. I remember he said that against when he boxed him. Yeah, he says, that's that's my office. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. when they come in on the Yeah. Now you're yeah. actually, you were, you were in the ring and after he said, the gym is the office. Yeah, that's my office. He says, this is my office. He says, but he's driving sick in traffic and going nine to five backwards on forward. Nobody wants that. He says, <laughs> I, I don't want a mortgage. Because you used yeah. to see how we struggled to pay the mortgage at the end and you lads or anything. Never and it, says that. it says this is this is for the electricity, that's for the gas, that's for the mortgage. <laughs> and and never was that oh I need to say No, he says I would not do that. He said anything I I'm buying my house cash. He said, yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well Luke, you're living at that dream now. You could be fighting for a world title in New York and just sort of yeah. America in the new year and into your thirties and Probably an unlikely world world champion a few yeah. years ago, but now you're not too far away from that dream. And you're Touch kinda, distance, yeah. Yeah. yeah you went for the world title? Yeah, we, we would have been a similar story. I, I done a degree uh, in instructional engineering, but it was that Darren had the discipline to go back and yeah. top the class. I, I just struggled through my degree, <laughs> but like he was top of his class. I mean, there's yeah. so, some some discipline. He was always a hundred percent of yeah, every exactly. single thing he does. He couldn't, even when you remember, you had the decks, uh, yeah, the decks, the DJ music, and oh, I said, Darren, that sounds good. No, that, that it's, it's not right, it's not yeah. right, nothing is right. 
you make a it tape. It give you a CD and it say, yeah. listen to that for a while, drive around in the car. If you drive around the, the campus, uh, yeah. you listen, I, I think I'm going to have to change this little bit. And right. yeah. all, uh, obsessive. Yeah, oh, yeah. obsessive yeah. was in the war. He was a perfectionist, but yeah, the DJ for a while. And even like, remember at my 21st, <laughs> he grew up and sing Mr. Bill Massey. Yeah. <laughs> he used to love singing, he was a performer. Like, he dances, was a he dances, he dances, he dances as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll do a duet with Samantha Mumbai right now. Yeah. <laughs> you want to? <laughs> <laughs> you actually said that too. You actually said that. Say, I'm going to meet her. You know it, you like Samantha Mumbai. You have to take for Samantha Mumbai. Yeah. He was always a performer. From this talking about kids, and it's just that's was his lifestyle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He would have went to a world toilet quick, I'd say. He would have right, moved right. him along quickly. See, he was at 27, I think he yeah. definitely would have been retired. He would have been, he was, it was and, quick. And he, and he knew he was conscious of his age, mm -hmm. and he conscious that he came into the boxing lane, and all of a sudden, he's flying along, and then somebody is putting like stops in front of you, yeah. and it's a hole in your back, and you feel like you can go forward. Yeah, I don't think he was in such great shape, but I don't think his age was much of a factor. No, I don't think he was a lot. He, he, he was so clean, he didn't want to eat. Like, I don't think he drank too much. He never drank his life. Like, he used to say about his benzes, you said about benzes, there were food benzes, it wasn't anything that was going on. I said it was McDonald's. I might have been. His benzes, just after, I think it was after his fourth pro fight, he came over to, he was staying with me and Fingers, and Karen would always ask him, will he stay for lunch? And he, yeah, I'd have lunch, but he'd bring his own. So there was a time he come up, he had his, he had his chicken, he used to buy the chicken, and he'd be the other stuff, that was after the chicken stuff. He'd buy his chicken, and he'd have it there. He had his, uh, his cream salad, or his, whatever salad was to put on the chicken. It's while he gets this phone call, oh, you're back trying to sort of push. So the, the salad cream was just pushed aside. He wasn't able to have that. That's how dedicated it was. For a little drizzle of this, for that phone call, he pushed it away. He just had the chicken and that was it. Yeah. Why is it always the senior tournament starts right after Christmas? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 After Christmas. <laughs> that was one of his pet eight. Why is it always just after Christmas the senior starts? Because Christmas Day we all sit down there and I make a massive massive fire <laughs> and I cook the biggest uh, pork and beef and everything at the table. Poor Darren is sitting on there with a chicken breast. Chicken breast is nice. Or even <laughs> my heart is a break for him. And I said, how could you eat? How could you survive on that? That's like a chicken breast boiled. Yeah. It's a breast. It and he's sitting on there and he's got it down. And that was his. That's, that's, he loved that's it. That was Christmas. That was his discipline. Yeah, that was his discipline. But he was ahead of the curve. Yeah, that wasn't being done back then. Yeah. 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 When I first went down, he was down and back down, strength and distance. He, like, strength and distance was unheard of for a few years. He was the yeah. only fat to do. And I remember, he used to, he used to talk to me, and forget what we seen, it was just coming. I was just in awe of him. Oh, so, yeah, just yeah. flip so flat. Yeah. Just talking, blah, blah, blah. I can't even remember, right? Because I was just going, Jesus, that's, that's where I need to be when I had seen it. Yeah. And it was all about his eating, because he had said to me once, he said, uh, I was never into the food, but he had said to me, uh, you have to stop eating for what you like, and start eating for what you need. Yeah. Yeah. The food is your energy, the food is your petrol, that's yeah. what makes you go. Right, that was the talk, because you yeah. were saying about the, the talks, when we were kids, him and Kenny Egan used to come in and have talks with the, with the junior kids, and that was always the thing, you, you wouldn't put, Diesel in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this extra fuel, you have to think of yourself as a Formula One car, you need the best fuel that's yeah. going on. Well, that's that's really yeah, good. Like that. He's ahead of the game with yeah, that. That's only big thing. He knew his body. Yeah. He knew his body and he knew, yeah. he knew what, what it needs, it. when it needs it, and how to what to put in it. It's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. And then you go, to go over there, back to over there again, and boxes over there seems to, the professional boxes. Seems to bloat up and then shrink up, bloat up and shrink up. But Darren was always constantly yeah. at the same, same level. Yeah. I'm saying that. Yeah. He, he was never a drinker. We used to go out as 18 year olds, we'd go to the Ice Night Club and I'd have a pint or whatever. We'd be in rounds and he'd have a black horn. So yeah. <laughs> we'd go to the black horn and be like, it's not the same. I'm not getting you one back because you're drinking alcohol. Yeah. I'm only drinking black horn. But we'd come home and we'd go back to the house. 
found yourselves. And as a normal eight day girl that look like a bab or some chips or something as you go home, then we go home, we'd stick on rice and chicken. <laughs> what about this stuff? I'm not getting that else, am I? I'm gonna have to. I was sitting there full of points and the great rice and chicken. And he loved that, that was him. And then the bed, that was grand. It's some great thing. Man, it's to be able to stick with. Yeah, from a young age, like. And, and I think, I think, I know, I know. Look back and people say, so I regret putting that into the bottom. No, I didn't. No. I never regret it. That day I took him down. And you follow that, but then you yeah. uh, I, I took him down to the bit and I'm going to introduce him to Gary. And he says, this is what you want to do. Because he tried tennis, we bought him the best tennis racket. He tried the music, we bought him an album, Dex, the, the, Dex, whole the whole lot. It didn't work out. And then this boxing. And I remember his mother said to me, she says, make him pay for it this time. Mm -hmm. I says, what? So I got him a job in Key Pack. <laughs> Key Pack is the meat factory. factory yeah. Yeah. And he had to go in the bins and take out all the cow foots and things like that. He smelly yeah. bins. Didn't give a sh. Going in there and get it out to get his way. He bought his first boots and I bought him the first, uh, we bought him the first glove. And that was it. And all the rest, all of his mom made mom made shorts. shorts. <laughs> 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 and the dance written across the front of it. Yeah, yeah the, the, satin so, green. Satin green, was that? <laughs> so he was that little Irish leprechaun, <laughs> black Irish leprechaun. <laughs> with that's all written across it. Uh, he was happy with that. Yeah. Boxing boots, we went over to Crumlin. Boots, the, yeah. yeah, to get his boots over there. And he bought, he bought his glove, got his gloves. Well, that was he set, set his mind to saving for something. Yeah. Whatever it was, yeah. he had to go do stuff to bake this look yeah. this. Parents are always told that if you want it, you yeah. can earn yeah. it. Like. You had to want it this time because <laughs> it was everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 so he, 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 yeah, he, he, he got a job in a feed back and he earned his wages. Just start doing that with my kids. Yeah. My kids <laughs> having skimps. Oh, yeah. stop on the same. How old is seven. your kids? They're only 12, the oldest, so oh, maybe they'll learn the work. I'm going to 12 in the tour day job. We had, we, we had Nicole and Shanique walking at the Brocken pub as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want extra money? Go and walk for it. Tony, before we finish up, and thanks a million lads for all yeah. your contributions. Just like 10 years on, like Darren just had a four, an ordinary 4 0 pro record. You know, from the outside, maybe if you're from America, somebody's looking and go, okay, whatever, you know, there's not much to see. It's just an unblemished record. But 10 years, I don't, I don't mean, I probably sound a bit cruel, I don't mean to, but I mean, I, what I mean is 10 years on and Darren has left such an impression on people's lives, especially in the small community of Irish boxing. What does it mean to you and you see the love that, that's still there from, from all the people you came across and, so, and a lot of people who didn't meet him, didn't know him, yeah. and still have that feeling from him. You, I, I meet in people every day of the week, to be honest with you. I, if I walk to Blanche's some shopping centre, people still walk up to me now and say, you're Darren Sutherland's father. Yeah, that makes you feel so proud of him you know i know there's a possibility high probability that darren took his own life because the way it happened they, there's room there for for arguments but it's gone that way i'm not proud of what he did if he did that and i'm not condoning it in any way it's a stupid thing to do and it's, it's i wouldn't if any if i know anybody going to thinking about that and going down that road I'll grab them and shake them because it destroys lives. Suicide is not a nice thing. It destroys lives. And it destroys your family life. It destroys your family. So there's nothing you can condone about taking your own life. If Darren did that, it's, it's a totally wrong thing to do. You, 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 I could understand some of it in the situation he was put, that he was put in. And you probably seen no way out. Yeah. So say there's a, a permanent solution that can't really be a problem. We could have fixed that problem. And if he did give us a chance, we would have been fixed that Because I talked to Darren the night before, this, this Sunday. I talked to him. And the issues that we brought up about going to, to Portugal, the issues that we brought up about the, the lack of training sessions and lack of this and the lack of things coming forward in his way, it all could have been resolved. But he just feel it couldn't. He felt it could. 
I had to grab it and put it in a bowl. If it, I don't just see that. I should have grabbed it at home. Well, I think it's great that he left such a, like you said, he only have four pro fights, but he left such a great legacy. And there's so much, all the positive stuff that he left and the positive impact he had over Reds. His death, but his death is not. Remember, like, remember for so long after just four weeks, it just shows up. Raw, raw if he was still here, can you imagine the, no. the people that. It'd be just. It'd be out of this world, the reception he'd get walking in anyway. It would have a big impact on, on yeah. me, uh, a fellow who and looked like me, who I looked, like looked, looked up to. Yeah. And something I heard inspired the hate that he could break that. Yeah. Now I'm a year older. Yeah, I'm a year older than Darren was when he when he passed. I'm still watching his face now. It's on him, all that for motivation. Yeah, the the British journalist Tris Dixon's former editor of the Boxing News said, I think Darren Sutherland might have been the first fighter to ever tell me he felt down. And like Tris has been beating boxers for years, that he was lonely, and that not everything was as it seemed. His legacy has helped many others since, but the struggle is so very real in boxing. I think ten years on, something has changed. I hope. I hope, that I hope so talk. too, but the people coming up in the yeah, industry, yeah. 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 I, I don't think anything, if because of what happened to him, it will change the attitude wow. of the yeah. people, the promoters yeah. and the trainers yeah. that's looking after you. It's a life you're looking after, it's, a, somebody, it's your responsibility, those people that you're looking after, and they need to stand up and look after them properly. Right. Well, I, I don't want to end on a sad note. Thanks for being so... Ah, or sorry. Person. I didn't want to go down that road, but it oh, happened. What was your favorite exactly. shot it was before we finished? No, 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 what was your favorite shot? shot? What was the signature? What was the one? What was the favorite shot? He said, the jab. He banged me with jab one time. Yeah. My jab's a radar. Boom. <laughs> 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 jab will take you around the world, he was saying. <laughs> he was full. He said, my jab's a radar. He just said it all right. There was a fight in York. Do you remember the one that he was... He, he just he paused in the middle of the ring. He was thinking it was the second round. Oh, you know, yeah. With the real yeah. old video camera and Tony video, like, and he just stopped literally for a second and then whack. God, <laughs> oh, come on, was yeah. This is very, jab, very that was, jab, And that was in that was in Yorkshire. It was the local um, champion. And he just freaked out. Yeah. 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 And I went, "What's he doing?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's like, it's like a springboard. He just like bam, and we. It was dumb and I went, whoa, and that was his that first, was York, yeah, it? that was his first, York like, off. cup fight, yeah, oh, he had some, he had some scraps, he got some beating as well, <laughs> he didn't get off, it was all his yeah, own yeah, way, yeah, yeah. yeah, remember the good times, forget the beating, yeah, yeah. he got some beating as well, don't worry about that, he's got some beating, there's, there's a guy he used to be, um, sharing the house with, and then I can't remember, he was, he walked up, oh, I can't remember his name, but this guy, was a professional fighter and Darren was only an amateur. And one day I was over in Sheffield over watching his sparring. And Darren, Brendan Ingle, pulled him over to one corner and he says, Hit and don't get hit. That's, that's all he said to him. Hit and don't get hit in that Yorkshire accent. And he went in there and he started doing But anyway, all of a sudden, there was only supposed to be body sparring. Yeah. <laughs> And it's wang, 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 wang in the body, and the air up its head, and we close to the air. And the guy just backed off. I said, he's supposed to be an amateur, and you're supposed to be a professional, and he was giving us the air, and he was battering this guy, like, it was crazy. But him and Pre Prince and Steve, you couldn't separate them for a while. Uh, no. And then like, yeah. Prince and Steve's up to his chest, the curve, his darts down, and all. At over. 16, look. So that was it, you know, walk into a room and make an impression on yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. how you remember Tommy, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Singing, honey. Oh, singing. Yeah. Sing. He would have been, he would have been like fury after his fight <laughs> after a while. Singing, yeah. huh? Let's see. Look, on that old lad, thanks so much for coming. Thanks, yeah. SVG Palette and Tyler Bob. Well, nice to meet you. Listen, I'm glad my son had made an impression in you. Yeah, huge impression. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. Hello, to you. Let's go home. Thanks. Let's go.